Hi everyone, welcome to week four of my breast cancer vlog. I'm Liz Reardon and this week it's all about the bum. So last week I left you saying that I was going to be put on CDK for L6 inhibitors and Fasladex injections for the rest of my life. And this week it's all about starting the tablets, starting the injections, what do they feel like and how am I coping? And it's funny, I forgot to say last week, um, my PhD was all about CDK4 and 6 in thyroid cancer. So it's really funny how things come full circle. I think one thing that really hit me was after I'd seen my oncologist, I was taken into a quiet room and she gave me one of these cards. Now it's a emergency number if you're on chemotherapy or a targeted therapy saying that if you have an infection, if your temperature goes above 37.5, you need to call in straight away. You have to go into A&E. If it's out of hours, you need antibiotics. Um, and this really took me back because I last had one of these during chemo and I thought, oh gosh, these drugs are quite serious and an infection could potentially kill me and I do need to go and pack my chemo bag. Um, remembering when Amy Dowden shared her story of being really unwell at home and not wanting to bother anyone and ending up in hospital with an infection. So if any of you have this card, keep it in your purse, store the number in your phone. This is the number for my hospital, not what your number is. Um, make sure you know what to do and pack a bag. Pack a bag. Because I got neutropenic sepsis during chemo eight years ago and my bag wasn't packed because I thought it's never going to happen to me, I'll be fine. And when you feel as rough as shit and you're scrabbling around and your husband doesn't know which pants you want to wear or where the phone charger is or what your special toothpaste is during chemo, just pack the bag and get it done. But the next thing that, the next thing that happened was that they gave me a box from Little Lifts, a fabulous company run by Una, um, close to me in Norwich. And um, it's full of lots of little treats and things. I open it now. That will keep me company and help me get through what lies ahead. And I'll do a separate unboxing of this, but it's just full of lovely little things to help when your taste changes, your smell changes, your hand and feet get sore, all for free. And I'm so grateful to them. Little Lifts is the most amazing company. But then we were back to more blood tests. Um, Mum always used to say they always want your blood um, and I needed to have blood tests just to make sure that everything was fine for my baseline injections and tablets. Um, the first thing that was on the list after the blood test was to have the bum injections. Now Fasladex works in a different way by blocking breast cancer cells attaching to estrogen receptors. And we don't give it to women up front because no one would actually really want to have bum injections every month for 10 years it's much easier to have a tablet like tamoxifen, but because my cancer had come back on tamoxifen and anastrozole and letrozole, this is what I was going to have. And I was really scared and I do this a lot. I imagined how bad is it going to be, trying to find blogs showing me how painful it was. I thought the needle would be like the Zolodex injection, which is quite a big needle because it has to push a pellet into the skin and your fat. But it was a huge relief to see that the needles were actually really small. Um, and it's five mils of the drug that goes in each bum cheek. And the nurses were amazing. I needn't have worried. They all know now that you take the drugs out the fridge so they can warm up because having a cold injection is horrible. So the injections were at room temperature. And she got me to stand with my hands on a table and I kind of cocked one hip. So I had all the weight on my left leg with my right knee bent and she injected the right bum. And then after a couple of minutes when that was over, I put all the weight on my right leg and I just bent my left leg. So then that was taking the pressure off my bum and I couldn't squeeze the muscle. And then she injected that side. And what you're seeing here is a lifetime video of me having that injection. And it sped up a bit, but you can see from my facial expressions, I'm not grimacing. I'm not doing a lot of ow and ooh. It actually wasn't that bad. I didn't really feel the needle go in. It stung maybe a tiny bit, but the rest of the time I was able to natter through. The bum injections are really, they're not tricky, but you have to know what you're doing. There's only one quarter of your bum cheek where you can give the injection because the sciatic nerve comes out of your vertebrae and goes down the leg. And if you hit that nerve, you can make your leg numb. It won't work. So it always goes in the upper outer quadrant, kind of just below the dimple where the hip bone is. My husband let me have his car, which had heated seats, which was lovely going home. And it ached a little bit but it wasn't that bad. I felt like I was walking a bit like a cowboy as I kind of got used to it, but it was bearable. And I thought, okay, if this is as bad as it's gonna be, I can do this for the rest of my life. And that was a huge, huge weight off my mind. Having it though, waiting to have it was another experience because I just thought I'd be called through to a nurse's room in the day unit to have it, but they sat me down in a chemo chair 
and they put my name band on and they checked my obs. And that took me right back to having chemo eight years ago, sat in those chairs surrounded by other people having chemo. And I just suddenly felt really sorry for myself. And then I realized that mum died on the ward just a few doors away. It was like the oncology ward was right next to the chemo unit and mum died there. And I just, it was horrible. It was just knowing. I had these flashbacks of her death, which wasn't the most peaceful. I was like, I'm about to have needles put in my bum, it might hurt. And I'm just right back there visiting mum before she was dying. Oh my God. And I thought, I'm gonna have to relive this memory every single time, every month for the rest of my life. And I wasn't prepared for that at all. And my brother was great and said, maybe think of it like she's there with you. She's there holding your hand. Try and think of that and not her dying, which I think will help, but I know it's gonna be really, really, really tough. Um, cancer isn't just all about the treatment. Um, yeah, that was really tough. But now back to Fazdex. So here we are, this is the box. Ibrance is the trade name. And one of the things about this is you cannot eat grapefruit or drink grapefruit juice whilst you're taking it because it interferes with how the drugs work. So the day before I started it, I think I drank an entire litre of pink grapefruit juice just to get my last fix because I really, really like it. And then I got to open the tablets. And there's a huge long list of side effects. Let me open this up. Oh, look, huge long list of all the possible side effects. And I was worried because this is what I do. You'll know me by now. I read them all and I'll get that and I'll get that. And how bad will it be? And how do I cope? And I was speaking to a friend whose sister had been on it. And she said her oncologist didn't tell her what the side effects were. He said, just wait and see how you feel and tell me. Because a lot of people don't get them. And I had to kind of try and remember that. Now, where are we? So this, this is what the tablet looks like. It comes in like a little pack. It's got the days of the week on it. And I'll open today's. You have to take it with food. And this is what it looks like. It's a rather bland, there we go. Colour, it's got Pfizer on it because that's who make it. And I'm going to take this every day for three weeks. And then I have a week off. And it's hard thinking that you're going to be taking these tablets that are going to make you feel ill potentially for the rest of your life. Chemo is a bit different because you turn up for chemo, someone does it to you, you go home. But this is me having to take the tablets. And I wasn't sure if I'd want to do that. I didn't know how bad they were going to make me feel. Um, had it the first night, felt fine. And the next day I thought, right, if I'm gonna have a sore ass, then I'm gonna have a sore ass because I've gone to the gym. So I went to the gym and I did my leg presses and I did my squats and it felt good to be doing something positive to kind of take control of what might be happening to me. But it's, it's weird living in this new world. It's kind of slowly sinking in that my cancer has come back a third time and it could come back again. And yeah, I can only imagine what it's like the people with metastatic cancer who have to go through this, hoping they get extra months or even years of life. And I'm in this weird place where I don't have cancer at the minute, I am well, and I'm having treatments that are making me feel more unwell to stop the cancer coming back. And that's just like anyone taking tamoxifen or anastrozole normally, but it just feels a bit more intense because I'm going to be having fortnightly blood tests and going into the hospital every month. And everyone says, you look really great. You look fantastic. I'm thinking, yeah, thank you. You don't want to tell them how you're really feeling, what you're feeling deep inside, the pain that you have, the scars, the mental anguish, the fear of it coming back. You can't have that conversation every time someone says you look great and say, oh, you think that, but actually you just have to smile and say, yeah, thanks, I'm okay. And hope that the right friends will be there for you when you need them, when you really do need to say, actually, I'm feeling pretty shit at the minute. And I was gonna end it there, because um, I didn't post last week, but actually I'm now two weeks into taking the Fazodex and the um, Eyebrows, and I thought I'd bring you up to date over what's happened so you can see what my life has been like. But first, I've had Botox. I can't frown. I can't raise my eyebrow. And I was actually done for migraines. It's been migraine, migraine awareness week last week and I get migraines. I used to get them one every couple of months and then I'd be getting them 
one or two a week. And I've got the drugs that work to stop them, but they knock me out and I thought, this is crazy. If I go to London for the day, I come back, I get a migraine. So I went to see um, a neurologist who has prescribed Botox, which actually has seemed to work. They, they inject it here and then here and then all the way around the hairline and a little bit just here. And I've had one migraine in a month. So this is a complete game changer. Um, but I do miss being able to frown. I also spent a day on live TV and radio talking about sexual harassment in female surgeons because two thirds of us have been harassed and a third have been assaulted in the last five years. Now my experiences were 20 years ago and it's still happening. And there's a survey that's coming out just to try and change that, make it easier for us to report it and be listened to and get the men doing it to us held to account. So that was a crazy day of literally eight o'clock in the morning until midnight doing live TV and radio interviews and people coming to my house that my cleaner hadn't been. It's like, I don't need all of this in the middle of my cancer treatment, but moving on. The main effect I've had from the Palpa Cyclip is that I feel tired. And it's not tired, it's fatigue. It's that absolute bone crushing, why can't I raise my head off my neck? Um, I know that doesn't make sense. You know, lift, lift my head up. And I needed an afternoon nap at half 10 in the morning. That fatigue would just hit me and I think, I physically can't do anything. And I'd forgotten what it was like. And in one of my new videos coming up about anastrozole and letrozole, I do talk about how to cope with fatigue. And I posted this reel the first day saying, I am exhausted. I don't like this. It's not fun. And all of you said, rest, recover, take it easy. And I had to say, you're all wrong because the biggest cure for fatigue is exercise. And that's why I went to the gym after my bum injections. It's why I've tried to go a couple of times each week. I've just started the Couch to 5K program with Donna um, Fraser and the Her Spirit app to get me fit to protect my bones. I know it's going to help, but I am spending a lot of time napping. Another fun thing I'm finding with palpocyclob is insomnia. And it's not like the crazy steroid insomnia of chemo where I'm just wide awake and my mind is buzzing. I just go to bed exhausted and I can't sleep. And it can be one or two hours later and I'm still waiting to go to sleep, which makes me even more tired in the day. But the fun thing that happened two days ago is that my tongue started to change. I'd just been to the hygienist and she said my tongue was a bit marked. And then the next day, my taste started to change. Everything just tastes really scummy. And my tongue looked like this. I'm gonna put, put a picture up here. It was sore, it was painful to eat. Everything tastes disgusting. And I went in yesterday to have my bum injections and um, blood tests mid-cycle of palpocyclob to see how I'm doing. And I had that whole horrible crying in the chemo chair because I was right back feeling sorry for myself because I didn't feel well. Everything tasted horrible. Remembering mum's death again, it was just, it was just horrible. But, but I got through it because I have to get through it. And they've given me some steroid mouthwash lozenges and another a chlorhexidine, I think licorice, and I don't like aniseed, um, mouthwash for two weeks. And I found out that my blood count has dropped a lot. And this can happen with palpocyclic. My hemoglobin has dropped two points, so I'm borderline anemic, but my white count have disappeared. I've, my neutrophils are 0.7, which is really, really low. So that means I'm at a much greater risk of getting an infection and an infection is more likely to kill me or make me seriously ill because I don't have the white cells to fight off bacteria and viruses. And that was a relief to know that I hadn't been making up feeling unwell. I wasn't putting on. There was a reason why I just felt so shit. But then I thought, God, am I going to be like this for the rest of my life? Um, so what my team have decided to do is to stop the palpocyclip. So I'm only having two weeks. I'm going to have two weeks off. And then I'll check my bloods again in a fortnight. And if they've come back, they're going to start me again at a lower dose. And that made me worry because if I'm having a lower dose, will it be as effective? But a lovely oncologist said to me, no, don't worry. The right dose for you is the right dose for you. It's not done by body weight and people are different weights and shapes and sizes and, and metabolize drugs differently. So like some people, the chemo drugs need to be dropped. It's quite common for this to happen. So I'm hoping in the next couple of days, my taste will come back and my tongue will stop looking like a crater and um, I won't feel quite as tired. In the meantime, I'm going to carry on with the Couch to 5K with the Her Spirit app. I'm really, I'm actually waking up thinking I want to go for a run. I want to go out and get fit. And that hasn't happened for a long time. Going to the gym is fine, but that cardio, it's, it's always a real stress for me. So that's good. 
And next week, it's really exciting because it's the start of October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I'm always really, really busy doing talks and videos and webinars and Instagram lives because I'm a breast surgeon. I've had breast cancer. But I'm going to be on the Vanessa Felt Show talking about breast cancer and my memoir Under the Knife. And then on the Lorraine Show um, on Thursday, the 5th of October, talking about their Change and Check campaign and the importance of exercise and breast cancer. And it feels really good to be able to give something back. But I know I'm going to need to find moments where I can just stop and knit and recover and recharge and, and binge watch episodes of Project Runway whilst I decide what dress I'm going to make next. So I'm going to leave it with you there. I don't have any secret tips or bonuses to add on the end. I'm really sorry. I'm just catching you up with what's been happening with my life. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Bye.